Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium. So, we had quite the eventful episode last time. We finally found Ruby and then we let her go again because, well, first of all, uh, we didn't really have much of a choice since she was about to kill herself and we didn't want that, obviously. But also because it seems like she is not the killer we're looking for. For once, the evidence against her is kind of weak to begin with, um, and uh, if she really was this cold-blooded killer uh, that killed Laylee just for being a mercenary, she probably would have killed us as well, right? She would have no problem uh, killing two cops um, if it saves her. So yeah, um, I guess it's not her, which means it's back to square one for us, since at the moment we don't really have any viable uh, suspect. <laughs> I mean, at this point I almost feel it could be classy after all, but we kind of ruled that out already since uh, the shot didn't come from the balcony or anywhere inside the building. So yeah, um, there isn't really much else that we can uh, follow up on except for one lead, which is we need to check out that mysterious island at some point since it is basically the only place where the shot could have come from according to Harry's calculations that we haven't ruled out yet. So <laughs> I guess we need to find that island. Um, and if I remember correctly, the island was actually the one uh, place that was the least likely place. So the odds that the shot came from there were the lowest, but I mean, it's the only place left. Also, um, we are supposed to look for Ruby's tent, which I guess is going to be somewhere around here. So maybe this will give us some additional information that we can work with. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's more health items, which I, well, don't really need, although I did use quite a few when Ruby attacked us with her contraption. Dark water trails into the distance. There's no way out. Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. And that's some money. All right, um, and I guess this is her tent. Let's have a look at it. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. <laughs> All right, let's have a look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Okay, so um, we can look at the books. Let's start with that. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. Hmm. Well, I guess the pulp horror uh, is probably not relevant, but the radio enthusiast magazines uh, were probably what she used to build her latitude compressor. That's what it was called, right? See anything? The lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. Um, well, let's have a look at the magazines. Rager Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? You pocket the worn brown leather journal. Well, that might be useful. A trusted friend left behind. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. I agree. Okay, um, let's see. You found Ruby's journal. Read it. Right. Let's do it. Ruby's journal. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and the brand name Schneller. <laughs> Gottwallian, I assume. Embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. All right, let's have a look inside. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. 
Let's examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. <laughs> Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. Thank you, Encyclopedia, for um, confirming my suspicion. <laughs> She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. All right, let's have a look inside. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Okay, let's study the handwriting first. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. <laughs> Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. So she made the effort to correct her mistakes in her own journal, okay. Anyway, let's flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. We probably can. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff we can look at, and I guess I will actually uh, look at all of it. So, uh, tell me more about the logistics. Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Huh. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. All right, so I guess this is about her drug trafficking business. Um, and what about the diagrams? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, mm -hmm. sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Okay, so anything personal in here? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few <laughs> passages with many questions in them. The way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis, she was going through a tough time. <laughs> Interesting how you can deduce that from the handwriting. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. <sighs> you smell traces of betrayal. Traces of betrayal. Um, okay, so how far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one hmm. is indispensable. A way out? A way out of what? Well, Apani, whatever it is, it is not her current predicament. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, more important to our case is uh, what she wrote the day Lely died. Nothing on March 4th. Oh. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except. But that's another matter entirely. Okay, so... Is she talking about her help for Classy here? It's going to come back and bite her in the ass? She is referring to betraying her previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? Her previous employer? Self-defense? I'm not sure what logic could mean by that, but... Logic had to pass a challenging skill check for that uh, conclusion. Um, yeah, maybe anything about La Puta Madre. That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Hmm. Well, I mean, apparently she is writing in code, so that is something that I would put in code in a journal if La Puta Madre is so dangerous. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? <laughs> right. You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre? Hmm. M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. I mean, maybe not the best code, but uh, let's have a look. Let's read the entry from March the 9th. Great. M's peon is coming to town. <laughs> no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. 
while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Yeah, I guess M is indeed code for La Puta Madre, since she, she uh, seems to think that Harry is La Puta Madre's peony. But if that's the case, then her gut feeling was wrong, since I didn't kill her. Then again, we don't know what Harry would have done if he hadn't lost his memories. I don't know. Would he actually have done this? Was he actually sent here just to kill her? I don't know. I mean, I don't know his past, so it's kind of hard for me to tell. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? What would the call be? The call? Did M call her person? Huh. Why? Uh, that's a good question. Why warn her that someone is coming to kill her or whatever? Were you supposed to find her? Even apart from the investigation, mm. then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. Am I sure this is a mistake? Look at me. This is a coincidence. I would never kill people for a mob boss. Yeah, like I said, um, I can't really say since we still uh, miss a lot of, you know, Harry's past. But my gut feeling says no, that he's not doing that. His service record only has like three or four kills. That doesn't uh, look like the... Uh, kill record of someone who is uh, killing people for mob bosses unless of course they don't actually enter his service record um, so <laughs> I'm inclined to say no but honestly I couldn't say for certain I do think this is a coincidence though because clearly Harry was sent here to investigate the lynching so it would be a rather big coincidence if at the same time this mob boss asked him to kill a person who is also involved in this lynching case. So, unless, of course, he knew that Harry was going here and then he said, well, since you're going to that place anyway, why not take care of Ruby for me? Or maybe he killed the mercenary so that Harry had a reason to go there. But honestly, that feels a little bit too uh, complicated for me. Um, so at the moment, I will say this is probably a coincidence. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. All right, let's read the next entry. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, <laughs> of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me yeah, and also, um, it seems that Ruby is a little bit paranoid and has trust issues. <laughs> I mean, apparently, in regards to the Hardy Boys, she was kind of correct. But it just could be her paranoia. Um, that's the reason she believes that Harry is here to kill her specifically, um, even though he's just trying to solve a case that just happened to be here. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, mm. first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. All right, so she is apparently thinking that M wants to kill her for some kind of betrayal that we don't really know. I mean, apparently she has been dealing drugs and trafficking drugs as a competition to him. So I guess that would be the betrayal, maybe. Anyway, um, what's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Well, I guess you will be on the run again, but at least I let you go and didn't rescue or kill you. It looks like she might have been framed. The lieutenant taps on the page. Framed by whom, though? 
That would be a first, or a fourth, <laughs> but who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? <laughs> then who do you think killed the Merc? Yeah, I guess it's good that we let her go. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Well, that's true. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has <laughs> problems with the Madre. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be her problem to solve, I'm afraid. Yeah, what do you think? Am I really a La Puta Madre agent? Uh, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. <laughs> I mean, if uh, Ruby thinks it is uh, the case that I'm a La Puta Madre agent because everyone says so, but Kim hasn't heard about it, then maybe Ruby was just um, exaggerating when she said that. But yeah, um, I guess I will have to um, ask someone who knows me a little bit better. But they are not really that talkative, I'm afraid. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so <laughs> trusting. Oh, shut up, drama. Then who do you think killed the Merg? Yeah, we really have no more suspects at the moment, right? Could have been Titus. Hmm. Then again... He pauses to think. But no one heard the shot. Seems plausible. I don't know. The, the man f wouldn't fuck me over. <laughs> I mean, doesn't he have like an alibi? Wasn't he in the room the entire time? And yes, no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Hmm. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. Right. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling in rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Okay, and what kind of business would that be? Um, but okay, I guess uh, that is at least one lead that we have. Are you La Puta Madre's peony? Ruby said you were a notoriously corrupt cop. La Puta Madre's peony, that's why she was scared of you. When you get the chance, call your station to find out more, if you dare. <laughs> I mean, are they just going to tell me that, though? <laughs> Return to the whirling after the whole instigated debacle. Someone there has something to answer to. Okay, um, I guess I will do that. I got another skill point, so I guess I will uh, save this as my new emergency point now. But yeah, um, looks like our work here is done. Let's leave the building and let's return to the whirling. And I don't think that anything has changed around here, so I won't have to look at stuff again. Um, where is the exit? I think it's over here, right? Yep, it's over here. All right, um, whirling in Rex it is. Um, oh, well, I can't fast travel from here. Maybe I'm in between places. Uh, let's go back to the fishing village and let's see if we can fast travel from here. Nope. It doesn't let me do this. Huh. Huh, okay, well. It's not like I have that far to go, but it's still interesting. Oh, hang on a second. Is this something over here? Oh no, I thought it was like something that was highlighted in green. <laughs> but it's not. Um, not exactly sure how I go up here. Okay, that's the way. We usually don't go here on foot. I usually always fast travel. Stop. Now. It is time. It is time? <laughs> for what? Time for the tribunal sounds ominous. Yeah, what do you mean? Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. 
Um, okay, and what am I supposed to do about it? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. My pepper box? Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your oh. pocket. <laughs> you mean my gun. Why don't you just say so? I am not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. I'll fight with my bare hands if I have to. <laughs> well, I have a gun, so I may as well equip it. Um, yeah, am I ready for what lies ahead? Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. All right, well, that's good to know. Okay, well, this is another very ominous warning, but, um... I mean, there isn't anything else I can do at the moment. None of these quests can be followed up at the time. And for this one, I have to go back to the warling as well, so... I guess we will just continue, but I will hit the warning and equip my gun, I guess. There we go. Equip this when times are most dire. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need the uh, uh, plastic bag anymore. Of course, um, should I? I mean, it's in my right hand, so I'm going to walk under the assumption that Harry is uh, right-handed. Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. Well, it should, because it's your gun. <laughs> it reminds you of the day you first held it, with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. Sheathe your sidearm, officer. A serious law official, caught <laughs> by the book, should know to only unholster their service weapon when using it is unavoidable. It's fine. I got some uh, warning about this, so I guess I will keep it on me. And I will make sure I'm fully healed. Okay, um, let's continue. A sewer grate, a gateway to the river of filth. <laughs> what a random thought. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Yep, there we go. I think the tribunal is starting. We have... Well, I guess these are the mercenaries because they seem to be wearing armor. And then we have the hardy boys over here. And yeah, it's only like three of them, I guess. That's another mercenary, I suppose. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth <laughs> shit fuck! This is the mercenary at the gates. Uh -huh. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Okay, well, this is already uh, starting to escalate. Uh, Kim, what's going on here? Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. What's the, who's the guy standing on top of the balcony here? <laughs> This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. I agree. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated huh. commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Well, I'm not convinced that any of these is responsible for the murder of your friend or and commander, so yeah. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. <laughs> I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? Well, look at Titus here trying to de-escalate. <laughs> Very nice. He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Okay, so the mercenaries are called Cortana, De Paul, and Ruth Hönkleven. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse, 
The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's the third one. Mm -hmm. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. Well, I didn't miss him, actually. I suspected that he was another mercenary. <laughs> this third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Oh. Heavily armed. Okay, we are out of time. This is, what do we do? Whisper, the big one is the mercenary at the gate, the scab leader. Ah, okay. So he put on his armor and he's showing his true face now. Stop, this is the police. Get between them. Whisper, let's walk away from them. <laughs> That's not going to help it. But yeah, I guess this is um, the scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. All right, um, agreed. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Ooh, well, um, so what do you suggest we should do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. Okay, well, in that case, um, let's go between them. <laughs> this seems almost suicidal, but uh, I guess that's our only option here. And there we go. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. <laughs> he licks his lips, waving his guns at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Pig fuck! This is the only word you can make out. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Easy now, no one needs to die here today. Say nothing, cross your arms. Okay, um, I don't know. Let's try to de-escalate? I feel that uh, provoking them even more by saying, well, I'm going to kill you is not going to help. So maybe we can talk them down. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals <laughs> hung him up. For everyone to see. Well, actually, they didn't. Um, someone shot him. <laughs> well, I guess they did hang him up. Hang him up, but they didn't kill him. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. Right. She doesn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. <laughs> or maybe she's just trying to de-escalate. With a wordless uh -oh. girl. The killer loads his long rifle. Uh oh, that is a very scary picture too over here. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Oh dear. Shoot him in the mouth. Shoot him before he shoots you. Okay, uh, I guess I will try. No, wait. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. Present an argument? Okay, I mean, what do you suggest, Rhetoric? Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. Again, that is a good suggestion, suggestion. So, if we can talk to him again, let's try that. I don't know about this Ooh. getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. Okay, let's see. Apparently, we have a number of options here. Think of an argument. Rhetoric. Very good chances. Talk about hanged men. Again, very good chances. And shoot. Decent chances, but not as high as the other options here. Um... So what do we want to do? Who is that? Point to the man. I didn't know you had a third guy. <laughs> Seems irrelevant at the moment. Listen, they didn't do it. You're all drunk. Look at yourself. So Wild Pine Rep does not approve of this. Now the question is, if I use one of the non-skill uh, check options first, is this somehow going to make things worse? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I will try to use at least some of them first. So yeah, they didn't do it. I think. Yeah. Who did that? Um, wait, I just need a little time to figure this out. Point to Titus. I think it was Titus. Point to the roof. It was Classia. Point to the coast. It was Ruby. Point to yourself. It was me. It was someone else. Someone who's not here now. 
that's what I think, but it's also kind of a poor argument in the situation. Because they're not going to believe me. Then again, I'm not sure if they're going to believe me any of the other arguments, so I guess I'll pick it anyway. How fucking <laughs> convenient. He gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. Oh dear. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. Yes, that's what we believe. A lot of people could have gotten to that roof. Like, God, the cafeteria match. Actually, they are here. Point to the enemy. It was one of you. I've changed my mind. I can still change my mind, right? And now um, we think a sniper did it. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals <laughs> right now? Huh? How about the kid? Tell me. The magic fucking sniper. One more time. Okay, I guess I'm not going to talk about the sniper again. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... Okay, um, we have another red check here. Think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? Because it doesn't sound very believable. But yeah, um, I guess I will attempt this check. Odds are pretty good. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Right. That's why they think Titus and the Hardy Boys did it. Wait, they didn't confess. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. Yes. You're lying. The Paul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. Yeah, but I mean, just because the Hardy Boys were telling crap. A Kiel Model 40 revolver, eight rounds in the barrel. The gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing. If they are drunk, maybe they can't properly hit their targets. You heard wrong. She and this man have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up when they confessed they were lying. The gardener isn't even one of them. <laughs> yeah, the hanging was only a cover-up. Oof. Well, um, I guess my argument was not convincing enough. He pulls the trigger, a plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The shot rings in your ears, a low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. Okay, so who did you shoot? The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, okay. crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. Okay, so he tried to shoot Elizabeth, but he missed? I missed. Okay. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. Not true. He purposefully overaimed and shot the window. You had him second-guessing himself. Only for a second. Do not assume he will miss the next time. Okay, fair enough. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. Alright, let's see. What other topics do we have? <laughs> what topic? Shots have been fired. <laughs> Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Um, yeah, but maybe I do want to ask a few more things. Who is that? Point to the man. I didn't know you had a third guy. Yeah, sure, let's ask this. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. Okay. All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude, the killer? Okay, let's just keep talking. No one needs to die today. Um, yeah, what do you mean, the killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. <laughs> he points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? Killing people? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. Oh, is this his body count? He kills, oh, he tends the stables. You think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. I'm a killer too. Good, I kill killers. Point to your chest. 
Uh, well, I mean... I'm not sure if I want to uh, provoke him even more. Let's instead kill the figures. About 50 little stick figures. All of them black, plus two little white ones in the end. Fifty? Okay. These men served in Semini, mm -hmm. the native islanders. I see. The two little white figures in the end are from when they moved to Rivershaw. They're recent. Kills black people almost exclusively? <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's right. Plenty of chips here. Mm -hmm. too. I see. T, let's fucking do it. The man presses through his teeth, his hands is on his belt. T. Okay, but you're still all drunk. Just look at yourself. Yes. So what? Your judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. I'm drunk too. Let's dance, baby. Nothing. It's okay. Yep, I would say your judgment is impaired. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Well, but you're still chatting with me, so maybe you don't want to start shooting after all. Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, <laughs> Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. So, do I dare to... Uh, talk about uh, Joyce after all? Let's try it. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he laughs, it's the hello laughter. Wild Pines is not going to forgive you massacring a bunch of innocent people. She's going to be mad when she hears about this. Um, yeah, I think so, and uh, Wild Pines may not forgive you. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes. A bull ready to charge. He's not listening, but looking for an opening. Now is not a good time to strike. He's looking right at your hands. Do something else. Get him distracted. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Joy is getting mad will impress them, but whatever. She's fucking gone. She fucking sailed off. You're alone. Well, that's true, but she still will hear about this at some point. Stay cool! Don't do anything stupid! <laughs> Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. Layla is gone. Fuck are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around, tired suddenly, sad even. Yes, what are you doing here? Just leave. You're not going to change anything about Layla's death. Guys, I, um... Uh, I just get in the way. <laughs> I don't even have a gun! Shanky, what's going on? Hold your ground! Any more of you oh, he's run, just running away. You, Marcy. We're doing this together. Well, Shanky, maybe that's actually a good idea if we don't even have a gun. I'm not sure if any of them has a gun, to be honest. They huddled close in a formation. Steel. The rest will stay. Even if it means dying here with him. All right, um, yeah, what about Klaas here? She could explain this, but I'm not sure if she will. Who the fuck is that? Klaas here, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! Oh, this is God. The manager calls down from the balcony. Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. <laughs> yeah, God, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? Um, okay, so you're standing here to do what exactly? It's not like you can prevent it by standing on the balcony. But yeah, what do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes All right. showed up! So I guess she also did the smart thing and left before uh, everything escalated. We should have arrested her. The lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. Yeah, maybe we should. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! But it's too late for that now. Okay, we have a number of pretty good chances here. As a matter of fact, this one even went higher. Um, 
Yeah, what do we want to do? Um, yeah, let's maybe try rhetoric first. Think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. <laughs> Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. I mean, we kind of tried that argument already when we talked about wild pines and that they would not um, uh, agree with that. I mean, Krenell is like the mercenary group itself, but still. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. All right. Just a question. Who's in charge of your unit after the death of your colonel? Krenell does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called down well once. What happened? Galp and say nothing. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe let's ask for whoever is in charge here. I am a Grinnell Major with over 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. So you are the highest ranking of the three of you. Nah, I just have the biggest gun. He wraps on his armored barrel like chest. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun. But we're beyond that now. Hold on, what's the highest rank at Krenel? Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if that is um, useful at the moment. As a leader of this group, reconsider your actions. This does not need to end in bloodshed. Yeah, let's try this one. You're right. But you see, <laughs> I want it to end in bloodshed. Great, great. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. I'm not sure if I did rhetoric, but <laughs> I hope I hope you're right. Okay, um, let's try the next skill check. I'm not sure if I have to pass all of them, but since I passed the first one and these two are still here, I probably have to. Um, so, yeah, I can't increase my suggestion any more than that, so uh, this will have to suffice, 92%. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. <laughs> okay, so let's ask about him first. So, who are you, a major? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut <laughs> to the ground. He points at the whirling in wrecks. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, <laughs> click. A realization comes to you, like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Courtenard. The dead man's name is Elise Courtenard. Right. He's brothers with the deceased. I thought the name sounded familiar. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. All sentenced to death by lead. Cortana, I know that name. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Oh, right, I remember that. Listen, you're Laylee. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. <laughs> that would be a lie. One night, Hal 41. That really happened, didn't it? He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your colonel. Conclude. Your colonel did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his kids. Um, yeah, I do know this name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raoul and Alice Cortanea look him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raoul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by <laughs> the same sick fuck. And then went to the same military academy and the same unit and the same war. You were foster brothers, I know that. Yeah, um, and you were together for quite some time, apparently. Same fucking mud hut town, too. He looks around, then wipes his face with his armored glove. Okay, good. Okay, um, yeah, his parents left him in a fucking leaf compact. I'm not sure how this is relevant, but I guess I'm going to bring it up. Ooh, Laylee. 
Yes, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee <laughs> in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finish the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. With his real anguish in his voice, a drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him. <laughs> Memories. Okay, I guess that's doing something. It's a mind fuck, Corti. <laughs> he wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Okay, apparently making them think about Laylee is at least distracting some of them, so let's continue. Um, everyone says good things about him, apparently. What do you mean, talker? <laughs> We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. Nice guy to be around. <laughs> Kim was apparently playing along. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kid tass here and there. <laughs> Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points towards the yard. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay <laughs> Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. DePaul seems to be like the most trigger happy. But I guess she's not going to fire unless Cotanea gives the command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Right, but first uh, tell me more about Banaital. Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. He points to him. In your ship parts, ready to fuck him. Indecipherable mumbling. Yeah, he seems to be the most drunk of all. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. <laughs> Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lady knew how to command. Okay. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. <laughs> that didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipt here. <laughs> he points to Titus and Eugene. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you Fox did nothing. Well, we didn't arrive until he was already hanging there, and we didn't know about it before, you know, that time. Listen, man. We told you we told us what? <laughs> What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fox, <laughs> you'll die first! Oh dear. Um, so let's continue to talk about Laylee. That seems to distract them. He had blue eyes. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's <laughs> eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that <laughs> shit, I guess. Or don't know what bitch is like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Okay, um, I guess um, that's all I can talk about. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his killer. Yes, I'm trying very hard. Find his killer. Cop, his killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I can assure you, it's not one of them, I hope. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. <laughs> today. Oh dear. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Okay, it looks like my odds have actually increased here distracted by memories figured out the armor got them arguing got them talking he's thinking of leaf compactor got him doubting his leadership okay um clearly this should be um an, an easy skill check to pass now so i'm going to shoot caught on air now that he's distracted let's do it mm. 
Nice. A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. Yeah, that's another problem that I uh, just uh, remembered. I only have two bullets. <laughs> So that's one bullet down, and we have three mercenaries, so yeah, great. Look through the smoke rising from the barrel, look at Cotanea. Yeah, let's not uh, look away from our target. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. Yeah, that armor is kind of useless if you just shoot the one part that is not covered by it. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, <laughs> but he can't. Well, they probably will start shooting now anyway. Yep, they will. Oh dear. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady. But the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter AR FA7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Okay, um, I have another skill check here. Dodge the shot. Kim wears Kim, blink, think. Um, I don't know. Should I really waste my time on this or just go for the skill check right away? Yeah, where is Kim anyway? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. Okay, so he's trying to shoot Rude now. He's trying to find a straight line of sight before the rifleman can take you out. In the background, the leader staggers. Of course, we know that Kim is not the best shot. It's not easy. He has 0 0.6 seconds to do so. <laughs> he won't make it. Okay, um, think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.4 seconds remain. <laughs> there are six little black dots in the tip of the barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Okay, I hope this information is useful to me. Absolute destruction. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. He's drunk. Drunk fighters <laughs> overcorrect. Move right, he aims further right. Get hmm. him to overshoot. Okay, that might be useful information for me. A full suit of armor can't be too agile. You can shift direction faster than he can. All right, there we go. That actually increased my odds to a pretty safe amount. He'll overcorrect and you are faster. Okay, let's dodge the shot. You leap left. A swarm of enemy left passes mere millimeters from your side, tearing fabric off your coat. <laughs> Feels like the lightest of tucks. Joy, I am alive. I cannot be killed. I have become immortal. <laughs> yeah, let's not get cocky here. <laughs> Stop shooting at me, please. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have given away your location like that. Watch out. To your left. The Paul is about to take a shot oh, too. At Kim. Yeah, right. Uh, she's still here as well. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling, he aims face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely <laughs> difficult shot. Okay, well, I hope that Kim is going to roll a, a good dice on that skill check of his now. Two shots ring at once. <laughs> One Ooh. from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from De Paul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Okay, so clearly Kim... Uh, actually shot this guy. I can see the blood. Um, yeah, I think he did hit the rifleman from the looks of it. Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, nice. disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. Nice. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. <laughs> I guess he did indeed pass his skill check. So who screamed then? Glenn. 
dying oh. in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. So who shot him and why twice? I guess DePaula was aiming for Kim but hit Glenn instead and Root shot him at the same time? I mean, they were badly coordinated if they wasted two bullets on one person and it's not even like the leader. Oh god, watch out. Oh dear. You see now? two crazed eyes stare at you through all uh -oh. the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Cortanea is still alive, apparently. Ooh. <laughs> well, yeah, that is impossible. That is literally impossible. Um, but I mean, I guess I should at least try this, huh? Yep, there we go. After all these green skill checks, we finally failed one. <sighs> it went so you well can't. until now. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. <sighs> your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. Great. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen through the darkness and the pain. Touch your lower body. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Yeah, let's see if we can see anything at all. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Uh -oh. <laughs> dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, a silhouette appears crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. It's so dark I can't see anything. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. I made it up. I remember everything. <laughs> there is a black echo. It smells like apricots and it's always there. <laughs> that's just going to confuse Kim. Um, let's just pick the one that is like the, the most uh, basic. <laughs> I can't see anything. Stay with me. You hear me? Stay awake. Look at me. I'm trying. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. Okay. A slender white shadow oh. towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. So De Paul is still alive and uh, capable of shooting. Yeah, I can see her here. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. Okay, I have a skill check here. Um, the lieutenant trusts you. Kim truly trusts you. Okay, so hopefully I will um, make this skill check. Let's do it. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. Right, I still have a bullet, do I not? I only shot um, Cortanea and everyone else was shot by... Well, Kim shot Root and DePaula isn't shot yet. So I still have a bullet, right? <laughs> That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. All right. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Okay, so I hope he managed to incapacitate the ball because I'm going to fall into darkness now. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Will I be a ghost now? Good, I want to die. No, let me back into the fight. Um, yeah, why not let me back? I still may have some stuff to do. 
the fight, there is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. <laughs> Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Of the hours. Hearty. Moaning in his sleep. Okay, that's good, I guess. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs. And feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. Right, I still need to find the killer. There is a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon he will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a complete <laughs> canaver. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets... Wow! What do you mean? <laughs> okay, so am I getting better or am I dying now? I think I should be getting better so I can solve this. You see case. the lieutenant's familiar shape okay. in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. Well, looks like I'm alive. Sunrise, Arabellon. He's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with a fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. Oh yeah, right. The room is actually looking pretty nice now. Yeah, um, <laughs> the room is clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It oh. took him an entire day. So, how long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take okay. the and curse and drink water. Ouch, the piss jacket, Kim, you took it off. Well, he never put it on, so I'm not sure why I get that dialogue. What did you say? Sunrise, what happened? How bad am I hurt? Um, yeah, what exactly happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. Mm -hmm. A firefight ensued. I remember that. So, is he dead? Yes. Okay, so Cotanea is dead. A bloodstained killer. <laughs> so... I'm a killer. Will this be um, noted down in my uh, service record? You're an officer of the RCM. He continues without waiting for a reply. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. I totally dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Right. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. Oh. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. Okay, so we have Glenn and uh, Angus and Theo who died. Three of the Hardy Boys. And, well, at least one of the uh, mercenaries. I'm not sure about the other two. You were bleeding out. You said something. I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer De Paul before she got the jump on me. Right. Thank you. <laughs> I killed her. Okay. And that's what happened. The lieutenant takes a cigarette from his coat pocket and lights it. A bitter smell fills the room. So you also killed. Well, I mean, he had to. I thought you only smoked one a day. And they're all dead, all three of the contractors. How many casualties on the Union side total? Three, as far as um, I counted. 
But yeah, what about um, the mercenaries? The pool was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Cronel for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... He breathes in the fumes, thinking. Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack mm. soon. I don't know. I guess that's possible. But I mean, I'm not, compl I'm not complaining that they're not here yet to retaliate. But yeah, I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And yeah, how many died on the Union side? Three. Glenn, Theo, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Theo, he was just too old for combat. All right, so that is what I counted as well. All. An absolute disaster. It's a total shit show, Kim. Not that bad, all things considered. I don't see how it could have gone any better. Yeah, I feel that I have been doing pretty well. I mean, I passed pretty much every skill check, except the impossible one. So I feel it could have been worse. Let's face it, officer. And this is both of our fault. It could have gone a little better. <laughs> Six people are dead. Okay. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. Right. And we are still alive. Both of us. Right. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped <laughs> between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal <laughs> purposes. So you say it's sunrise? Sunrise by rebellion. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary oh. scene. Okay. Isn't that written on your... My gun, apparently. It served you well. So, is it war today? The gates of the harbour are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am <laughs> relieved to say. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. <laughs> All right, that's good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, how bad am I hurt exactly? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. <laughs> the outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrom. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have given away um, the boots from the armor. <laughs> uh, the one piece of the armor that I didn't, didn't get. So can I walk? We will see. We will see. You won't be able to dance much, that's for sure. <laughs> You should be able to live with limping around, though. So, has anyone from my station been here to see me? No. Of course. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armoured motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbour cranes rise to the sky. So, does this mean they just left? Back to that shithole, he says. <laughs> okay, I guess they just left. Um, yeah, I guess I don't need them. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Oh, you haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they're worried about you. Okay. <laughs> that means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. <laughs> if they were... Wouldn't they be here? If they're so worried about me, where are they? Good question. I don't know. He may have some idea, but he's not going to get into it with you. All right. Um, if not my station, then who treated me? I did. Well, thank you, I guess. No need. <laughs> and what about you? Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. Huh. I try to not move too much. Okay. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, <laughs> stupid of me. 
I guess you were a bit distracted. But okay, let's try to get up. Come on, Harry, you can do it. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> My disco days are done. I feel fantastic. Let's rock. Who cares? Who cares about me? It doesn't matter. I'm very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess my disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Ephrater. <laughs> I mean, he still was able to dance quite impressively. So, yeah, what happens now? I honestly don't know. You don't know, but I don't know either. Good, because I totally do. <laughs> nope, I don't know either. We can't talk to Everard. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too, hmm. thanks to our meddling. So you don't think it was a good idea? I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, you've checked? She's really... Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? Yeah, I'm sure he checked. So, yeah, what do you think? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. <laughs> it better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Right. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. This is because I'm Laputa Mother's peony, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. The fucking Maybells came, the flowers. I'm not sure if the flowers are relevant. What about the hole in the wall? Someone was checking out. Might be unrelated. The goddamn footprints. There's still a 28 possibility the shot came from a distance. Right, we still have the island. An antique bullet from a Belmar grave. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? They're all there, old bunkers and weapon caches, revolutionary era. You know what I think about solving crimes. Yeah, what about, like, the island? We still haven't checked out the island. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Um, what about the footprints? Yes, God cursed the footprints, not solving <laughs> the case for us. Au diable. And what about the murder weapon? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. Okay, um... You know what I think about solving crimes. Yeah, I'm not sure if any of the other points are relevant to our case. At least they don't really seem to lead us anywhere. He arches his brow. The <laughs> ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard, is almost impossible, is super easy. Actually, I want to talk about this crime some more before I tell you what I think about its hardness. Um, it's not impossible, but it is hard. It really is very hard. <laughs> that concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? That's right, let's give up. Time to start drinking. <laughs> I hope you're not ready to give up. No. Are you ready to limp? Um, yeah, I think I'm ready. Let's just continue. Good. Where do you want to limp to? The lieutenant did mention doing more ballistics. Also, it's just close enough to endure the walk. We should check Classy's room upstairs. Let's just aimlessly wander until a clue presents itself. I don't know. Sure, let's check the room again. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Right, let's do it. Okay, so here we are. And yeah, this episode is going to be like super long. <laughs> it's basically like two episodes long at this point. 
So, I don't know. Maybe I will try to cut it into two halves or maybe I'm just going to make it like one really long episode. But either way, um, we are going to end it here and I will look at all these new orbs later in my um, quest journal and then we will uh, try to find out what to do next. But for now, let's call it a day as always. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.